Well, didn't he, Rigamortis? I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the East End for Evil. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. Tonight we have SCP-096, or The Shy Guy. It's actually, yeah, in the nickname for him on the internet is The Shy Guy. Okay. Hmm. Um, so, so the uh, Mario Universe now, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, SCP-096. Uh, this one's actually one that I we should have done a long time ago, because it's literally one of the first ones that was ever suggested to us by one of my buddies. No. Oh. Like, yeah, I was I, when we first started the show, somebody told me, oh, you should do SCP-096, and I read it back, like, five years ago. Uh, and then again, three years ago. <laughs> and then and I was like, why haven't we done this one yet? Uh, and then somebody po- uh, commented on, our, on a recent YouTube episode and saying, hey, you should do 096. And I looked up and was like, right, the shy guy. We really <laughs> should do that. So sure at some point you're like, oh, I'm sure we'll do it before episode 20. 300 or something. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> so we got, well, we're, we're, we're got, we got there. We're, yeah. at, we're at 300 now. So we're almost at 300. Anyways, so, um, yeah, uh, SCP-096 is on the SCP Foundation. Uh, you could, it was created by Dr. Dan, uh, is the poster. Um, it was posted on March 17th, 2010. And here is the classification and whatnot for the SCP. Uh, it is a Euclid class, which Euclid class SCPs are anomalies that require more resources to contain completely or where, contain, where containment isn't always reliable. Usually this is because the SCP is insufficiently understood or inherently unpredictable. Euclid is the object class with the greatest scope, and it's usually a safe bet that an SCP will be in this class if it doesn't easily fall into any other standard object class. And just a standard note, SCP or uh, SCPs that are autonomous, sentient, or and or sapient is generally that that's generally the classif- they're classified as euclids because uh, they're unpredictable yeah mm-hmm. due to the inherent unpredictability and object can act or think on its own so uh so scp096 also known as the shy guy as i mentioned uh is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height subject shows very light or very little muscle mass with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. Arms are grossly out of proportion with the rest of the subject's body, with an approximate length of 1.5 meters each. Skin is mostly devoid of pigmentation, with no sign of any body hair. Uh, Its jaws open to four times the norm of an average human. Other facial features remain the same as a regular human, with the exception of the eyes, which are devoid of any pigmentation. Uh, it is not known yet whether SCP-096 is blind or not. It shows no sign of any higher brain functions and is not considered to be sapient. And then this is where I paraphrase the rest of its description. <laughs> and not say, did you read, read that word for word? <laughs> yeah, and not just copy pasta the, 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 the descriptor. <laughs> um, while normally docile, it will lash out violently if its visage or face is, is seen by um, outside forces. Uh, it will run at varying speeds. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, with the exception of sketches and drawings, so like indirect um, viewing of its uh, mm-hmm. his face. Um, you say that, but indirect viewing of his face through an actual photograph still counts. That is a direct viewing. That, that yeah, but it's ca- indirect because you're looking at a picture, not at him. But it's more in, it's it's more direct than a, than just a sketch. Basically, third hand a third hand account. Or third hand reference mm-hmm. is your safe, but second hand and first hand account. Uh, uh, it just can't be the actual viewing or anything that is photorealistic, like yeah, that is so realistic that it actually 100%. captures it completely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean that goes back to like the whole thing, like cameras were uh, considered to like be basically like capture the soul, like with its well when you took a picture of somebody. So like 
basically it's just so accurate that like it, it basically it's the distortion level of like uh, of what you're seeing. Um, Quick note though, I do wonder if someone drew its face accurate enough that it would count. That would be terrifying. Yeah, like like oh, that, maybe that's why they got the tattoo artist earlier, or like in the uh, to uh, to sketch it out because they drew like basically a caricature mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, so basically, once anybody sees it. Directly or like secondhandly directly, that's that's a thing, I guess. Um, basically, you sees photo, it or through a photo. Yeah, no. sees it directly or sees it through a video or a photo. Uh, it will react violently toward um, the target, which becomes suddenly SCP zero nine six dash one, and will go to great lengths to um, reach its target. Basically, beelines for it, and nothing will stop it. Like, no material or method has has ever been able to slow it down or stop it, um, like, at a marginal rate. Uh, and it will vary speed depending on how far it is from the, from it, from its target. Uh, and then once it reaches its, uh, its target, it brutally kills them and then redacted the victim. Um, they discovered, like I said, uh, that the sketches, um, appear to, uh, to be in a uh, like basically a, a a way to like see it without seeing it, mm-hmm. um, and they did this by having a D class who was a tattoo artist in a bathosphere in in an ocean trench off of New Zealand, uh, draw the creature from a from a video from a photo uh, uh, reference, uh, and then send that through like a tube that like made it, like sent it up into the back to the surface. Meanwhile, the creature was already running and then swimming and then diving de- uh, into a ten thousand. Uh, 10,000 foot deep uh, trench mm-hmm. and brutalized the bathosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Foundation strove to minimize sight of the creature uh, to great lengths, although one incident occurred where the victim had taken a photo of the SCP in the background on while on a skiing trip to redacted mountains. Um, mm-hmm. Like, maybe years earlier and didn't see it and like had had this this photo like framed on on like on a mantelpiece or something again for a long time before it finally triggered when he took note of four pixels mm-hmm. on the photograph <laughs> and that's when SCP-096 started running uh for the target uh and it went through three town or two or three towns before getting to the town that it needed to get to, and then basically, like, massacred a crowd because they, at that point, SCP uh, Foundation agents had corralled the townsfolk to kind of minimize damage. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately... They maximized damage and stuff. Dash one, <laughs> dash one was in the midst of that crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, so, also, apparently this creature, like, as long as you can get behind it, you can see it. Like, you can see its body and stuff like that, but if you see its face, you're fucked. Mm-hmm. So, like, as long as you're behind it and you bag it, you're, you can actually, that's how they've been able to contain it. Mm-hmm. Um, and due to its threat level and its potential, uh, SCP-096 has been designated for termination by Dr. Dan. Uh, though good luck with that, it's pretty indestructible, as the uh, the incident earlier mentioned suggests. Like, they were throwing, uh, like, basically firing, like, anti-material rounds at it, and it was, like, Blowing chunks of flesh off of it, but its skeletal structure was still left intact, and it was still going, and it wasn't even like stopping when it was like struck in the in the leg or struck in the head. It just kept going. I'm assuming it also regenerated like Wolverine kind of deal. Kind, uh, yeah, that's if it had no, huge chunks taken out. I heard that, then... or that's what it uses the bio, like the uh, the people for, because we don't oh, know what yeah. uh, we assume because it's redacted that it's it devours or it absorbs because yeah. not, there's nothing left left of them. So yeah. it's kind of left to be assumed that, but it's pretty good assumption because <laughs> after like they say that, um, so yeah, that's, that's basically SCP 096 in a nutshell. Um, so, uh, do we have any grammar inquisitions? No, no. Okay. So just move on to actual thoughts. Uh, so this is just concerning, uh, document 096 dash one, which is the bathosphere situation. Mm-hmm. I think it would actually be really funny if the D class had just screwed over Dr. Dan right there and then and <laughs> just revealed the photo to the camera. <laughs> like, oh, wait, this? No! <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, because, like, D class uh, are, by their nature, like, criminals. Like, they are, mm-hmm. 
they're brought in, they're taken in from the prison uh, system. Mm-hmm. So, so it sounds like the kind of person that would do, be like a, a dick like that, and or yeah. like or like inadvertently do that or something like that. The question is, why did they have to have video surveillance in there, anyways? Yeah, it could have really just been like uh, audio. Just audio, yeah. Because mm-hmm. why have the potential for an outbreak? Yeah, that was actually really dumb. That, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of, that's that's a really kind of dumb uh, procedure mm-hmm. <laughs> to like have video feed or have a video feed of that. <laughs> Um, and then, okay, this one, it wasn't until I reread, uh, the incident situation that, and like realized like how they capture it and stuff. This made sense. I was like, how did they even place the, te- the tracking collar on SCP-096? But it's made clear that like, it's not like, it's like you, you, as long as you don't see the face, you're safe. That's mm-hmm. the entire like, um, like procedure for it. So yeah, that one really can just go away because it was explained. It's it's pretty much like e- easy to be explained as if you as you read the whole thing. Yeah. Um, do you guys have anything for document zero nine six? Or sorry, zero nine six dash one. I didn't break mine up. Oh, yeah. the documents. Okay. Yeah, I guess I do. Um, okay. Just because, like, I was going to be moving on to the incident uh, next. So. Yeah, like I don't have them like hundred percent specifically laid out to it, but it's like I put a title when it's swapped to a different yeah. document. Yes. Yeah, um. All right, so at this point, I didn't know how it escaped, or even if it could escape from the cube that it was in. And it does, yeah. Yeah, so this was the first one where it's like, okay, it can break out, but it really made me wonder whether or not it just runs, or if it just supermans out the wall and just flies. No, it just runs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I find it later that yeah. it runs, but yeah, this was, wasn't sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was almost like wondering, like, if you're if you're tagged by SCP zero nine six and you're in an airplane, does it like leap, <laughs> super like Hulk style into the plane? It says later, basically. Oh, that's not true, specifically, yeah. but see, I was wondering if maybe he was already on the plane, like being like transported, and that's mm-hmm. what, what what happened. But maybe, yeah, I feel like that part is like like you gotta wonder like how do you escape this thing? <laughs> you just you, you don't. don't. You, that's the horror of it. You don't. Um. All right, so concerning uh, Incident 096-1-A, which is the um, uh, talk about the, the, basically the report of like when they were trying to find a, uh, find the guy in one of the towns that the thing was just started, oh, where it just started running mm-hmm. and broke, uh, like breached uh, containment. So I really enjoy the immersive report log format here. Uh, this could easily work as a found footage style short film. Um like that's how I was envisioning it the entire time in my head, like reading these reports and like like visualizing it. Like I was visualizing it through different camera angles, like different like the different camera feeds they were they were uh, basically like transcribing. Hmm. Um, the crushed pacifier scene was a really nice touch to show like the collateral of what could happen in that situation. So what? So okay, so there's a scene, there's a part here where like they're uh, the guy's being interviewed. And he's um, talking about how he, he was on site when uh, at one of the hi- uh, one of the highways that uh, the creature had gone through, mm-hmm. and like basically was dealing like was going to a minivan where like the people inside had been like brutalized because they had all seen its face, and he was like uh, he wouldn't go any further on like the horror he saw of like inside that that minivan, and all he shows is like he was basically like um, and then he goes into his back to his bunker after the interview and commits suicide. While holding a crushed pacifier, like a baby pacifier, so basically he was when he was on site. It kind of insinuates that when he was on site, he saw uh, in that minivan basically a family, and he like it traumatized him super bad. How did I not read that? Which incident know. was that? It's an incident zero nine six dash one dash a. Like it's one of the interview uh, videos or one of the inter- interview feeds. Um. It's where the guys like split. Yeah, I, can I, I know which one you're talking yeah. about. Just continue. I'll okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a really good like kind of showing of like the collateral damage that this thing can do because or its threat because like no one's safe from this thing. Uh, like no age group, no. Um, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't care what like what what you are or who you are. You're just you're getting fucked because you've seen it. Mm-hmm. Um. And then before that, like during the observation of the, of its um, and its attempts at like to halt it in the desert, like as it's going between towns and like on the I forty, mm-hmm. um, 
really shows its threat level. Like, to quote Reese from Terminator, it absolutely will not stop until you are dead. <laughs> like, it's, it's, there's a cosmic horror to this creature, uh, both in its potential doom, because if it's, if its face spreads, like, a, a while, like, globally, like, it's basically a, a, like a, an end, like a, a threat, an end threat. Um, because it will just keep destroy killing and like can't be stopped, mm-hmm. uh, and it is like so so tenacious, ten- uh, has so tenacious and so immutable in terms of like how they can't destroy it. <laughs> like it, even when its flesh is like coming off, as long as the, the skeletal structure is it remains intact, regardless of what they've thrown at it, and it, that seems to be what it keeps going at. And I have something actually from that in my my kitchen notes uh, a little bit later, but we're still actual thoughts. So, um, yeah, that's my actual thoughts stuff. So, Mikey, he says <clears throat> evil. What do you got? All right. So, back to the description of the creature. Mm-hmm. That it's 2.38 meters in height. Uh, that means it's 7.8 foot tall. Yeah. And I was like, is this Hachi Shaku Sama again? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it starts murmuring, po, po, po. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the other description of the elongated arms and uh, the jaw that opens up uh, reminded me of uh, the Ice Cream Man from Legion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Susan, the Ice Cream Man, I knew what movie you were referencing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were just like... <laughs> <laughs> just spider walks around, spider runs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was yeah. an angel. <laughs> Honestly, that, that ice cream man, if you took off, like, basically just made him, like, a Ken doll and, like, well, I mean, we don't, we don't know if he, like, it doesn't look like, it doesn't sound like he has any genitalia or anything like that, but just, they yeah, Ken doll him and then, like, just strip him completely that, and, like, bald him and some of that. That's basically the, the ice cream man. <laughs> like, that's kind of, like, a good version of him. <laughs> And then there's the um, coffee revelation that isn't really a revelation in my mind. Oh yeah, the uh, the <laughs> fact yeah I, yeah. So there's for 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 the people here. Um, so during the bre- the initial breach, um, everyone in the lab where where breached got wiped out except for one guy, Doctor o- o- Oleski. Oleski. Um, because he was on break at the time. And then it's revealed, like, after all, like, the, like, the carnage and, like, incident of the incident is, like, revealed that the, in the interview, uh, situation, uh, he's brought back and it's, like, kind of funny that, like, that facility doesn't have a break room or coffee breaks, <laughs> for that matter. Wow. And, uh, almost like he, like, he planned, he did it on purpose or something like that. Yeah. Um, or he was purposefully like not there for some reason. And then like, we get like, there's like some talk, uh, basically get, he spilled the beans for, uh, Dr. Dan. Mm-hmm. Um, my question like for that is like, really the, like SCP facilities don't have break rooms. <laughs> Seems weird. Yeah. It's a little, uh, you know, HR on that guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have some quotes here. So. The interviewers, where were you exactly at the time of the breach? And then the doctor is like, on break, getting a cup of coffee. It was pure luck that I wasn't caught in the containment area. And then later, it's like, later Don says, so are we finished here? Uh, one last question, doctor, or statement as it seems. We find it interesting that there was no break room at research site redacted or coffee. So, the the way I see it is like, well, he just went on break. He couldn't get coffee at the research facility, so he <laughs> he drove, <laughs> he out, drove to out to the, the, the local the local uh, coffee place. Yeah, yeah, so, it's entirely possible. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they're not imprisoned there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is also it's like so. I'm, I'm sorry, like it's like I'm sorry, okay, like we're it's like we're listening to your bullshit. Yeah, we're listening to your bullshit. I don't know why you're you're telling us this bullshit because like we know that the site doesn't have a, have a a lunchroom or coffee for that matter. <laughs> it would be funny if he says that, but he's like, "Yeah, I went out to yeah, yeah. Tim Hortons." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because it could be in Canada. Yeah. It's, there's not, desert, there's deserts in Canada. There's deserts in Calgary, right? <laughs> no, probably not. There's prairies. I don't know. Badlands. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And then I have issue with the four pixels. Oh, yeah. Because it was a picture taken in the 1990s. So it's going to be super blurry, but it's a, yeah. And it's not going to be pixel, it's just going to be blurry because it's a regular film camera, more than likely. Yeah, so, like, and, well, we, we do discover that there's scrambling tech. No, the scrambling tech doesn't work because it. So the, the, they bring up the scrambling tech. They're bringing up a whole different thing here. No, it's in the. Yeah. It's in the, the well, I, I know it's in there, but he's not talking about the scrambling no, tech. I was, I was bringing it up for a second because I thought it might be important, but, like, yeah, the scramble tech didn't work because there's a fraction of light that you see that goes into your retina that you're not even conscious of that you see the creature's full The face. speed of light is faster than the speed of the computer. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, like, the four pixels, like, you don't even see this thing because it's so distorted because it's so small and blurry. That's not even his problem. Okay, then what's the problem? His problem is the fact that it was an old picture taken without a digital camera. So there's no pixels. It's not pixelated. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's technically pixels because it's like little dots. Like, those are pic- like what are pixels if not dots, um, like, from a printer? Just saying, like, can't, like photos by themselves are made from, like, tiny little dots like, that basically make up a uh, picture. Like, in the, inking, in, in the printing process. Yeah. I'm a graphic designer. I know these things. Yeah, but <laughs> y- you should know the difference between something that's printed that is a picture has a very high fidelity versus what's online type thing. Yeah. So, four pixels on a high fidelity picture taken with film... Is impossible. Is a very, very small yeah. amount... I'm just saying, like, pixels are huge. But yeah, it, it could also, like, I guess there could be another, like, term for it. But, like, he's using it with the terms he knows. But, yeah. Yeah. Or this is way in the future, and it was taken digitally <laughs> yeah. 50 years it's ago. In the, it's in the 2080s. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 2090s. Done. <laughs> yeah. God. Remember I mean, that? they have scramble goggles, so yeah. why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah, the scramble goggles with, like, a microprocessor that, like... Face recognizes it and tries to instantly scramble the facial recognition of SCP-096. Mm-hmm. That 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 was actually a little far fetched to me. <laughs> the, the 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 goggles, <laughs> but then again, they didn't work. So so I guess it isn't that yeah. far fetched because it was just like basically fringe science. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and actually thinking about the supposed four pixels and the scramblers. Um, basically, the scramblers, based on the four pixels, didn't work because they got any pixel of face. Not, yeah. Like, it should have been completely blacked out type thing. Yeah, like, like the photo <laughs> show. Oh, so even if it, yeah, even if it did work, it would still recognize that as itself. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, well, again, they didn't really, they, they don't understand this creature, like, how it works. So, like, this is probably, like, they discovered, it's like, oh, we can't even distort a photo. We just need to black it out completely. Because people have to die for yeah. them to realize well, what it does mm-hmm. and doesn't do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's what D class is for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I have more notes later. So okay, give me yellow. So browsing that section. Mm-hmm. Either I stopped early for some reason, like, uh, the last part with, like, the CNN footage and the coffee shit, I, it wasn't on the page I was reading. Oh, no. I, like, when I go home, I'm going to load it back up and see if I just stopped scrolling for some reason, or if it just isn't there, but regardless, I've browsed over it. Um, yeah, I'll go into my notes. So, and it actually kind of half explains my first note. In regards to a missing character, because uh, right early on it says any and all photos, video recordings of uh, 096's likeliness is strictly forbidden without the approval of Dr. Blank and 05 blank. Yeah. I was like, who the fuck is 05 redacted? It never showed up. Yeah. But, but it's this one section that I, did, I apparently missed. didn't see. It. Yeah. But it, even in that, what even is it? Hmm? What is 05 whatever the fuck? What is it? 05 he, okay, so he 05 was, 1 is what it is in the audio recording. Yeah. It says 05 hearing. Yeah, he was, I, I believe he was the guy on site when, like, uh, like during the, like, like looking over the collateral damage of the creature. He's saying, like, upon reviewing your testimony and available footage, the 
and the confession of the late Dr. Oletsky, blah, 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 blah. That's 05-1. Oh, okay. Who the hell is it? <sighs> because of the name, it sounds like it's a robot. No, they use, like, code names, because, like, it's the SCP Foundation. It's all, your, like, it's all like classified shit, so they use, like... Yeah, like Dr. Dan. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> That's not quite exactly, a code yeah, name. And, and notice, like, Dr. Dan, or Dr. Daniel Dan redacted. Like, they don't give you, like, last names or, like, yeah, they don't, they only give, have nicknames or, like, first names, because they don't do last names to hide the... Oh, it sounds like this 05-1 is some overarching, like, authority figure. Oh, 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 the, oh, okay, sorry, yeah, that's, yeah, no, they are. They, they're basically overseers for the SCP Foundation. Okay. Yeah, sorry, that, I was, I was getting, like, I was, like, I thought you were referencing, like, a, the person on trial and not the person who was doing the trial. No, what I was reading is what that person was saying, what 05-1 was saying to yeah. Dr. Dan. Yeah, 05-1 is, uh, is is basically an overseer within the foundation. Okay. Like, they're basically the guys that, like, judge, like, and, like, manage the, t- the, the program. And it doesn't say that specifically here, but if you watch, if, if you read a bunch of... If you're a fan of the foundation... You already know that this is a character. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Right from the get-go, when I was starting to read it, I was starting to go over its containment and everything. It says, approximately one or two minutes after the first viewing, 096 will begin running to the person that viewed its face, who will from this point be referred to as 096-1. And at this point, I don't even know if they're like in the same cube. Like, they put a dude in the cube with him. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, because, no, like no. what's the point of the cube if it doesn't even stop him? Th- they're just doing what they can do, like, to keep it... So, if they keep... As long as they... Like, the thing is, like, they put it in the cube and, like, in that container, because even if it can break out, like... While it's, it's in... It, do- while it's docile, yeah, so it just want, wanders around in there and they want to keep to it there out. so that they can, like... That's how they're containing it for now. Yeah. But the problem is not internal, it's external, because basically, like, who knows how many other photos there are? Like, like it kind of shows at the end, who knows how many other photos there are out there just waiting for somebody to, like, look at, like, a, a smudge in the distance, and then yeah. he, tr- it triggers the SCP entity. Pretty much. But at that yeah. point, while I was reading it, yeah. I didn't understand... How the relation to Dash One and him were, yeah. whether or not they put someone in the cage with them, whether or not it's just someone outside the 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 box that just sees a picture, yeah, like but has a normal life. Yeah, yeah. like I don't, I didn't know at the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you had to read the whole thing to get that. Yeah, I have to read the entire thing so <laughs> yeah. I can oh, go shucks. back. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, so I can go back and understand what they meant five minutes into it. Yeah, so like that's the point of reading a story, gamer. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sorry, like that—that's the truth. Like you—you you have to read the whole thing to get the sum of its parts. Yeah, but it has to make sense from the get-go. So no, it can... doesn't. <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes, yeah, but like sometimes, like the story's more interesting if you don't know the whole thing until the very end, and then it reveals everything. Like that's that's storytelling. <laughs> yeah, it just annoyed me. Okay, so the purpose of the cube is to give the researchers a five-second head start. When the when the outbreak CP... happens, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's essentially what I got from it because it takes a moment for the creature to break through the yeah, because it's like thud, thud, <laughs> just breaks through, yeah. yeah. But either way, it, it was confusing at the time. I didn't know if it was like an adjacent cube to it or there was no yeah. classifications to it. I only found out. When it went, when I had to click into the other document talking about the tattoo artist to, in the in the cube or in the sphere thing, yeah, we needed to declassify that entry. You know, that, that, uh, um, but yeah, like it's yeah, you're basically declassifying like the report, <laughs> like the 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 the, the uh, connected report or attributing report. Does that makes sense now. Well, I don't know. It's like a lot of these notes are essentially while I was reading, I was extremely confused, and it took me. Like, I had to read most of the story to yeah. understand what they meant back then. Yeah. Because, like, at this point, I'm like, I don't... When it says at no point... At this point, there's no no material or method that can impede their progress. And at, at that point, I didn't know if it meant, like, it escaping its cell or it getting into the, like, cell within a you cell. You still think that there's another if there's cell? A, if there's a dude in there, and they're like, okay, well, we'll, we'll surround him in wood. Maybe wood won't stop him. <laughs> oh, no, it killed him. Okay, but they're maybe still... Maybe concrete. <laughs> maybe yeah. steel. Maybe titanium. Yeah, maybe they I, they were doing, like, secured, like, tests where it wasn't breaking out into the public eye. Yeah. But no. 
Yeah, then we got that report and it's like all made it clear. They're just trying to keep it like contained so that the like not so, doing a good job. Yeah, no, well, they can't. How, you do a better job. I'm <laughs> like, like how do you make? How do you do? Like, uh, well, then again, like, they like they finally like if like, they have a lot of D class dudes to burn through, <laughs> literally do what I. They say. really don't. But I mean, it, it has it does one thing. Yeah. It goes after, kills, and redacts <laughs> the person. Someone who they sees its face. They are redacted from they existence. Are. <laughs> so if you straight up put a guy in the cube with it, yeah, it's only going to go to that guy. Yeah, it's not going to break out and cause collateral damage only- and have a whole bunch of onlookers potentially see him spreading the murder sentence. Basically, it's like it's like a pinball. It's like murder, 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 like murder, 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 murder. They can choose where it's going to go. Yeah. So why not choose to have it go somewhere where it's going to just kill the one guy that the, that's expendable anyways? Yeah, I, I think Put him also, in a bunch of materials and see if there's anything that's a bane to this creature. Like maybe... Yeah. So there's just a hallway. SCP-096 is on the one end of the hallway. D-Class guy is on the other hallway. But in that hallway, there is a wood wall, a stone wall, a brick wall. A metal wall. Yes. Yeah, like no, I, I get you. Like, like it's I'm cartoony, sure but I'm sure, I'm sure they've done that. And then it just becomes basically the Juggernaut scene. We're like, uh, we're from uh, from uh, the one X Men movie. I think it's the third one Probably, um, from the original trilogy, where like the Juggernauts like bashing through the walls as like Kitty Pride and like the one kid are like facing through the walls. Yeah. <laughs> but pretty much. Yeah. No. I, if I, they I, have I, done I, that level of testing, that'd be nice. Yeah. But um, it's kind of vague when it says like. Or even like it'd be interesting, like like in one like they test it, like basically they just have like a pouring like like wall of uh, of like molten metal to see what happens when it gets like goes through like molten material because like uh, some of the things I think it was like what if the creature is like directly on the other side of the globe from the person does it just go down bro, <laughs> bro through the core <laughs> to get to it like like will that kill it or will that just like just like it will just keep going. <laughs> Or will it destroy the world by cutting the world in half? Well, it won't cut the world in half. It'll burrow. I like, know, I know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, and again, like by the end of the report, by the end of the century, like it looks like they're they basically have um, they're attempting now to kill it or mm-hmm. destroy it because it's. And I guess it does say at this point, no, no material or method can impede their progress. Yeah. So does that mean like no material that? Like, they've tried every material in the world, yeah, they probably, and nothing works, or just out of the ones they've tried, none of them work. I so guess a little, a little vague. It could be it sounds a little like, bit better. It sounds like you want an extra document link where it shows, like, a report of, like, all the different shit they've tried. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to see that. Or even <laughs> like, just in that line, say, like, we've tried every material known to man, and nothing can stop it, this. It literally does say, like, no material or No method. known material. No known material or... What? Well, there's no material like, what That's is, what I'm saying. Like, it's no like, material that they know of we've not works, used but they it. may or may not have tried every like, material. Wait, guys. We need to try and find out what a ma- adamantium and auracalculum and all those other mythological metals. I'm sh- we're the SCP Foundation. I'm sure we can find one of these mythical metals. Maybe that'll stop it, because it's an unknown metal. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it does say no known metal or material or, like... I, I you know what I, I I as soon as I said I was like I understand where you're coming from. It's like yeah. no no metal that, that they, they know, know about. Of. Yeah, like essentially like out of the ones they've tried, none of them work. But have they tried every material known to man? And have sure. they surrounded him in pillows? <laughs> like have they surrounded him in freaking uh, marshmallows? <laughs> like everything <laughs> known to man. Okay, yeah, all right there uh, you. you you tell that to the two oh five dash one. I will. <laughs> like you tell that to the director. Yeah, try literally everything. It's like, sir, have we tried a marshmallow wall? <laughs> it's like you're D class now. No, <laughs> you're a genius. Try it. Yeah. You're going to be on the other side of the marshmallow wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> promote this man to D class. What? Uh, <laughs> you have marshmallow uh, armor as your uh, as your protection. Good luck. Yeah. It turns out that works. It's like, fuck. Yeah. All right. You're 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 uh, set up to uh, not D class. Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> it just immediately like wipes it out. Just like boop, vanishes. <laughs> like as soon as it touches marshmallow. Yeah, totally. Caught. You never know. Yeah. So, um, video incident um, from the SCP lab. 
Yeah. Where they have video surveillance of it breaking out and leaving. Its face is blurred. Yeah. So, so no one can, so it doesn't so affect no other see, people. Yeah. First of all, there's the point that we brought up where even if its face is distorted, it still attacks people. So anyone viewing this would probably still be attacked by him. Yeah, it just seems like a bad idea to use security cameras. In also, that yes. Like, stupid to have video security on this thing. Like very stupid. You you even mentioned in the in the report that like you use motion sensor like pressure sensors and stuff inside like that. the cube. Why don't you just use sense like other sensors like that? Also, sp- does infrared like if you see like if you have not ca- not optical ca- or not like normal optical cameras, but if you have like, like if you look at them through thermals, yeah, and if shit? you see through thermals, like would that affect? Would that I don't know. They that? haven't tested that. That's true. Yeah, that that might be something worth investigating, but. I don't know, maybe they've wiped him out already. Good luck with that. <laughs> and also, the fact that its face is blurred in the video means that someone had to load up the video in an editing program and manually edit its face, which means that they saw its talking, face. Unless they have a program, like a, a computer program, that like they just pop, pop the video fee- file in, and it vo- facial recognizes it, like, they, like the scrambler. Yeah. And But because there's nobody looking at that device, or at the uh, the program when it does this, it's automatically scrambled and you're good. Yeah. Or it's automatically black boxed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they have a program to do that, yes. Which I imagine they would because, I mean, they are this global... Because this is the 2080s. This is the 2090s, actually. Because <laughs> remember, it's remember like 1990 blank. Mm-hmm. Or 1990 redacted. Mm-hmm. So... Well, then it's 1990 redacted, not 2090. Although <laughs> technically, apparently, like, they're, they're referring to 1990 as if it's a past. So, like, maybe it's somewhere in, like, 2000... So it's in the uh, 2090s, the... The three thousands. Who knows? They're in the thirty. They're in the thirty odds at this point. <laughs> Either way, wait. Wouldn't video it surveillance like, is stupid. Yeah. Wait. Would it yeah. be twenty? Wait. Would it be twenty ninety? No. It would be twenty one. It would be the twenty one uh, odds. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting. I'm getting like I'm deep diving down the rabbit hole because, uh, of the stupid little silly thing that we came up with like months ago or years ago yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like the 2080s and the 2060s and 2070s you sons of bitches <laughs> that are not on Patreon it's not even like on the main feed it's something you guys came up with while you guys were doing your early like deep dives of our pre- of our earliest episode stuff yeah. Yeah. come on but it sticks because it's cool <laughs> if you want to know what we're talking about audience check out our Patreon and, uh, and check out their uh, Al Dente Revelations and Al Dente Reloaded episodes mm-hmm. uh, anyway <laughs> Plug yeah. a wet plug aside. Yes. Um so again, during the video feed, yeah. it breaks out and they release a nerve agent to murder everyone. Yeah, because ninety percent or ninety percent of the po- of the people are already infected. So Yeah, and I get it, so they won't come back and kill them. Yeah. But like <laughs> this is a merciful death. Blink. But um So when I'm reading this, I read this after reading the documentation about the water sphere. Yeah. So, in my brain, whether or not this is actually true, this made me think that this was what happened when it broke out of the water sphere. Oh, or that- what? No, sorry. When it broke out of containment to get the guy in the water sphere. Yeah. Yeah. That's very possible. Is it? Uh, I... Huh. It could... It could be. I, I need I need to relook at it. Like, relook yeah. at the, that entry. Um, yeah. It, seems like it could procedure. just be another situation. Yeah. Yeah, like all the like, I don't know if it's just one, like this entire story is just one event happening, but it's not. It's at least no, two there, events. There's multiple. There, yeah, there are multiple. This basically, we're going through the track record of this thing. Yeah, but so, at this point, I just read the documentation about that, and then it went into this video recording. So I thought that this was connected to that. Meanwhile, after reading more, this is, I believe, his breakout attempt to like go take after like this, the town square thing. Yeah. Um. But again, I had to read this entire section to know that. Yeah. And that's really one of my problems with this is I, is I keep having to go back and re-understand shit I read a while ago. That seems to be a recurring thing. Yeah. But um, with me having the thought, the wrong thought, that this is them doing their experiment with the water sphere, mm-hmm. they're also shocked that he broke out. Meanwhile, if this is a planned event, they would all know and they would all be out no, of so the room. It, so it's not yeah, because so it's that that one was planned because like they yeah. knew that he was like they knew as soon as the guy looked at it like they were, the the reason why everyone was shocked at that one is because they that didn't was the realize breakout. yeah they didn't realize he would no, yeah so that was yeah that was during the um, the breakout to the town because they were but trying the to find one. the guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but again I had to read the entire thing to know that mm-hmm. so until then I was extremely confused and I'm like they should have known. 
like when exactly when it was going to break out, they um, they shouldn't have been surprised. They they should have sent up motion detection sentry guns around with live ammo and tasers instead of dudes with guns. Except that it doesn't it. work. Except apparently, tra- doesn't matter if they use tranks. It doesn't matter if they use any kind of firearm. It doesn't do anything. Like, but again, I also don't yeah. know the level of testing that they've done. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, well, that's part of the bureaucratic unknowableness of this. Mm-hmm. So. I agree. It would be interesting to have like a document where they like are testing like all manner of stuff, and then by the end, like um, it just kind of like trails off, and just like by the end, we just, and then we just get like all all materials and methods have been tried, not to no effect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have this huge thing of saying they could have done this, could have done that, but again, that was with the wrong thoughts because I thought that this was to to do with the water sphere. So moving on. Okay. Um, there's this one point where he says, um, so you're saying it's your own fault? And then he responds saying, absolutely not. This is a new discovery in, the, in uh, 096's behavior. We had no way to know, and we're lucky it did not turn into an XK. What's an XK? <laughs> did no one else question that? Nope. I figured I'd be like, ah, oh, I don't know what that means. But XK. they will 100% know what it SCP. means or will have looked it up. Well, oh, here we go. XK, SCP. Right up, right up first. Thank you, Google. Uh, <laughs> XK is on the SCP Foundation uh, uh, guidelines. XK, we took the damn thing. Wait. Are you just reading a new entry? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, there's actually... So, on SCP w- a Wiki, or when I go to look up XK, there's just XK, and then there's this, like, small document of... Uh, we took the damn thing and wiped the blood and shit and piss and tears from its face. Nothing was beneath. Light shone through the cracks. Reality itself bent to the wills of madmen. Only words remain. Sliced through severed stones. Redundancies enough to keep back a hidden king. Trees in the forest. Deep uncertainty... Undirected hatred, fear, and loathing shapes it all and remains unshaped. Fresh porphyria, dry and wet and old and new and everything between, solemnly inept. A few swift stabbings, ten thousand steel doors broken down to scraps of concepts, moderately gnawed. Knowledge lies in parts Puzzles upon ciphers, upon riddles, open doors, resolving in place. Eternity now, all clocks in time compress to an instant variance, cannot change again. Warning, personnel, pending XK class, end of the world scenario. Thank you and farewell. XK class are basically apocalypses. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you, XK poem. (laughs) <laughs> so that's I guess weird. So I guess that's actually. Hang on. I wonder if that's actually in the. Uh, if that was actually from pulled from their um, uh, object class. Yeah, look at the object class thing. I didn't see it. That's why I just left as so, a question. XK class apparently it, it's not in the object class, but apparently it's basically an apocalyptic event, more like world event, mm-hmm. which makes sense because this thing does have the potential to become an apocalyptic world event if it can't be stopped and if you see it, you die. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. basically like like it's Samara from set from the Ring. It's like everyone like started streaming the Ring, <laughs> the Ring photo or footage. Like if some asshole like posted that on YouTube, suddenly like five thousand pe- or five million people just suddenly get slaughtered by uh, Samara seven days later. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, moving on to the helmet footage. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this ERA guy says this is Echo Romeo actual. We have visual of the target. At data expunged, knots and increasing. Uh, I didn't know that airspeed was measured in knots, to be honest. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that either. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did think it was weird because it was like, what? He's o- yeah, especially because he's over top of a desert. I'm yeah. like, there's no water anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, apparently it used to be measured in knots and sometimes kilometers, but now they're like, since 2010, they're kind of standardizing on kilometers per hour. <laughs> Which makes sense because this came out in 2010. So, like, yeah. Or, like, so it, it, it was still probably being used at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So either way, it's not wrong. I was just I learned a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, the dude mentioned uh, motions off camera. A du- different dude shows up with a, a modified uh, sniper rifle, sh- shoots two shots and hits him. Yep. And all that. 
Um, so as cool as this may be, do you understand how difficult this is? Like how, that he's like shooting it from a like from a um, from a vehicle from a moving helicopter and ta- and trying to keep up with a thing that's moving fa- slightly fa- like getting faster and faster than the helicopter itself. Yeah, there's an entire plot point in the movie Sniper about this about how fucking impossible it is. <laughs> and in the movie Sniper, like it's made even worse because in the movie Sniper, yeah. he's sitting in a Huey helicopter stationary. <laughs> okay, yeah, and he's hitting a guy that's running away from him, and he. Hits him with a sniper rifle. Yeah. He doesn't actually in the movie, but spoilers, not really. It's an old movie. Um, but, and that point was enough that at least everyone in the movie is like, whoa, you did that? And that was a stationary helicopter with a dude running directly away from him at the same elevation. Yeah. This right. is a helicopter that's way above a guy, both going at extremely high speeds, and he na- nails him with two hits. Yeah. I mean, this guy's okay, a so, god. Yeah, no, well, it's the SCP Foundation. They probably found an SCP that's actually just a regular guy that's really good at sniping. <laughs> For all I know. Sorry, I gotta take a quick break. I guess I gotta let, oh, close that door. That's, I'm afraid that the dogs will get agitated. The dogs are actually SCPs themselves. And they will get agitated and wipes all that. But specifically, it gets agitated when I arrive. Yes. <laughs> Well, the, right. yeah, no, like, uh, sorry. Yeah. You see, the, the bullets are actually like heat seeking or something. No, along those lines. So when it, it gets is close a modified enough, sniper, it is, it, is, it is the twenty nine bees and oh no, sorry, the tw- the twenty one the twenty one aughts and Shadow Run. Because <laughs> wait, yeah, because I mean, doesn't Shadow Run have like homing bullets? No, no, <laughs> no. I tried, I tried. You failed. There are <laughs> smart bullets in real life. Yeah, and I mean, but like, like they're not. Like oh, oh, and there's smart bullet like in the what is it? Um, uh, aliens, <laughs> the smart gun. <laughs> That's for targeting purposes. Not like the bullets themselves aren't smart. The guns targeting is yeah, smart. Fair. But that being said, if yeah, there is some sort of modification to this modified sniper because they didn't say it's it modified, modified to cover, so their, yeah. cover their ass. It's also mm-hmm. cinematic and really cool if they actually did hit it, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but it, just when he did that, I had to kind of call bullshit on it. Yeah, but okay. If it's modified to a point that it can do all the calculations for the gun's speed through the air and the target yeah. speed down there and windage and drop and all that, then fine. Yeah. But it's mm-hmm. still a little little bullshit. <laughs> Fair. But they would have been better off just opening up with a minigun on it because <laughs> at least they'd hit it. And they do yeah. use a minigun on it later. Yeah. But. It just doesn't do anything. No, no, of course not. Honestly, I, I'm surprised they didn't just use missiles. Just like, like, just, just, like, it's in the desert. Just glass that section, like, that area, uh, that region. If the helicopter had missiles. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. it may or may not have. That's true. Mm-hmm. But um, the sniper would have a, had a better chance of hitting it if he was, like, stationed along its projected path. Yeah. So then it goes, meep, meep, and zooms past him, and then the sniper just pops up behind him and shoots him in the back. Yeah. He'd have a better chance hitting him there, not from a helicopter. Mm-hmm. And it would still give the cinematic of, oh, well, we're hitting him with a fucking Barrett, but he's not, not stopping, yeah. so goddamn. But it'd be more believable, also, at loved, least to me personally. Yeah, that's fair. I also loved it when it stopped. Like, it, it tried to slow its its its, uh, its speed uh, when it hit the hill off of that the first the town, the, that last town, and it just destroys three houses <laughs> as it crashes, as it comes to a stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like, I see that scene of, like, it's just like, yeah, this thing, does, it's like almost like a superhero, like a Superman, just accidentally crashing through a couple of buildings to try and like stop his, his speed and like velocity. Did you find it funny that he was like rolling down the hill? Yeah. I didn't actually I, for I, some reason. Well, okay, I found it funny, but I found it funny in a scary way. Yeah. Like there's almost like a like, Jesus fucking Christ, this thing is doing this by accident. Like yeah. it's, 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 it's causing collateral entirely by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, there's almost, like, I kind of, like, while, like, like this section, like, reading this section, I did kind of get, like, a sense of awe for the creature in that, like, it's it's the same kind of, like, primal fear you get when you stare at a crocodile that's only, like, five feet up below you on a on a boardwalk in Gatorland. That's oddly specific. <laughs> I, I, I saw some things when I looked at those monsters, into those dragon's eyes. Mm-hmm, fair. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, a, there's, like, a part when I was in Gatorland in Florida. Um, I was at, they have like basically a five foot above the, the water, like of this like large pool full of gators. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a boardwalk and you just like, I look down and I was like, Oh cool. There's a gator here. And then there's more of them and more <laughs> of them and more of them. And it like, just staring at the one, even I was getting a sense of like, I am 
literally staring a dragon in the face. Like this thing is so old and like like primal. Like I, it was almost like kind of a like this thing could like just j- lash out at me and I'd be done. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm only five feet away from it and there's only wood and some like metal wiring keeping me like like as a barrier. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was the same kind of like awe you kind of I got a little bit from reading like this segment where like he's just running across the desert going after his target. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So uh, my next point is on uh, the interview. With Dr. Waleski, mm-hmm. um, describing his actions after the containment breach had happened. Yep. We're saying, oh, we sent these guys and these guys out and uh, alerted Dr. Dan to the situation and everything. And again, even this far in, I thought that this was all still connected to the underwater sphere. So I'm like, wouldn't you have done all this before? Because it's an experiment that's pre set up. Yeah. I feel like that might be on you a little bit. (laughs) Because I didn't put it together that these were different incidents, even though they're all called 096-1 or A. Like, it's all the same. (laughs) Kind of. It's all the same letter, and it doesn't have a different code. Like, it says incident code 096-1 for the the, uh, audio log. And then... Dash 1A for the video log or something. But that could just be different classifications of the same event. Yeah, okay, I will I will give you this. I do feel like the documentation could be named a little bit better because uh, document, uh, the document with the bathosphere is the, uh, document number 096-1. The incident report is 096-1-A, but then the inner audio log interview um, with Dr. Dan and Captain What's-His-Face... Um, <laughs> I say as I just look at the black bar. Doesn't matter. Uh, is uh, audio log of interview zero nine six dash one. See, yeah, I do feel like they should like at least number like how many zero nine because there's a lot of zero nine dash ones. Like it's because zero nine dash one is the designation for the victim. So even like zero nine dash one blank or redacted. So you don't know how many there are, but you know like that. Yeah, like mm-hmm. dash one just means that you're the target. Yeah, but. To now to, become a part of the SCP. Yeah, but they need to set up set up the different incidences like zero um nine six dash A is the first incident that happened. Yeah. Then dash B is the second incident. Mm-hmm. Like or like uh, in like zero nine six I A incident A in, yeah. or I two incident two. You know, like it needs to be sectioned out better so it's very clear because. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's I, I will, all the same I will grant you. I will grant you that part of your of your argument. Like mm-hmm. it does feel like the the while it does have to be not like kind of redacted and classified, it does also for this for this story it does it could be a little bit clearer. So maybe who knows? Maybe if an SCP Foundation like person is listening to us, I mean they are they do allow for to go back and like edit and like and fix and uh, improve entries mm-hmm. so yeah just really classification of the two instances that are happening would yeah. make it a lot more readable okay so yeah uh talk about that so all this helmet cam stuff it says it's a helmet cam at the start but after that i didn't really view it as a helmet cam like yeah. it didn't do anything specifically to describe what a helmet cam would see specifically mm-hmm. it just immediately went to third person cameras for me yeah for this whole town square massacre scene Okay. See, Did I, you see I, it through a helmet cam? Yeah, I, thought, I saw it to basically like, yeah, through found footage mode. But then again, I love found footage and like I, I have a lot of reference material on like how found footage like films like are shot and stuff. So I kind of just, I guess it may have just like implanted that knowledge into my like viewing. Yeah. Videos. Like for some reason for me it was the opposite. Like I said helmet cam, but as soon as I started reading, I just <laughs> immediately did not put it in helmet cam. You, I went, I went like from my, like my, one of my favorite genre, film genres is found footage. So like, I went to that mode immediately. You went to third-person shooter. <laughs> Not even third-person shooter. More, more like a third-person camera. So XCOM. Just... <laughs> X- you went to XCOM mode. Kind of. Or just like a movie camera. Just like yeah. being able to move wherever it needs to to see the action. Yeah. Because everything is so specific. And like this one camera sees everything happening. Yeah. So it's like it's a disembodied camera. But um, yeah. By the end of this incident, I finally understood... That this is a different incident because it says, oh, well, there's a... It broke out because of this one guy's photo. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you did it. 
isn't isn't getting a isn't isn't getting to the end of the story rewarding? No, <laughs> no, not at all. Wow, well, you're wrong, but we accept you. <laughs> Your wrong opinion is all right to know. Yeah. <sighs> Just uh, really made me angry, honestly. That's fair. I've been angry for a couple of days because of this. Really? It just pissed me off so oh much. God. But um, either way, next audio log starts up with the interview. Um, let me quickly browse over this and see if I just I was just I me venting. I thought this was going to be a short episode because like we I were all angry like, so and much. Like, Holy shit! <laughs> it's because I was confused for three quarters of it. It didn't I get. I get it. Going I get on. it, buddy. Uh, it's just, it's just <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> So he had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a bad read. Okay, the third <laughs> thing to talk about. Awesome. The the captain, whatever the fuck, Captain Redacted Man. Yeah. Um, sounds like superhero. Um, he said they told us to bag and tag. They didn't tell us jack shit about not looking at the damn thing. Um, and my response to that is, are you kidding me? <laughs> like you you. You're making the SCP look like a bunch of amateurs here. There's one thing you need to know about this creature. Don't look at its face. Yeah. If you send people to go get it, why wouldn't you tell them to not look at its face? Yeah. Well, again, like, maybe at this point they didn't know, but, like, no, they knew. The, yeah, this, this is at this least is the like, second. Yeah, yeah. And that first yeah. um, <laughs> experiment with the, the water, sphere. water sphere, yeah. that they've done that after they already knew how it worked. Because they... Gave a target a photo and to look they, at. They yeah. already knew how it worked. Yeah. So that's just them. That was really them. like, yeah, that was really dumb. Yeah, because uh, they're testing the new scramble gear. Oh right, I love the I love the <laughs> argument. It's like, uh, it's like, oh, oh I'll, t- I'll show what that guy. Uh, I'll show that guy what an egghead looks like when I bash his head into the fucking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the doctor Dan just lost it <laughs> on, on, when the uh, when the marine like back talked about a scientist. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Uh, that was that was actually really really like I like some of the humor. Like some of the humor kind of like adds into like the horror because they're like it, it's, it's also kind of, actual humor that would be happening in yeah, these sort exactly, of situations. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And then, you know, the part where um, Captain What the Fuck says, um, yeah, sorry, we had two backup choppers, one of them with my team and one on backup, uh, and Dr. Blank. Uh, we stopped the target about two clicks, or sorry, we spotted the target two clicks north of our patrol path, but I'm guessing he wasn't facing our direction, else we would have been taken out then and there. Can he fly? <laughs> Is what well, I asked there. Well, because... no, that's, that's what I'm wondering. Like, can, yeah, like because my one of my methods of like trying to avoid Vadim is like you just have to get onto a plane, and just keep going, <laughs> like just stay in the air. <laughs> but like, does that does that work? Or because like, does he does he Hulk jump? I don't know. Because he, he at least as far as Captain whatever the fuck says, like he would they would have been dead there in the sky. Yeah. To be fair, we do see um like we do see that video foot of that uh that like plane crash. So maybe the SCP did take that down by jumping up and destroy and like and breaching the uh, the cabin. Maybe yeah. Like that that could have been the like, basically the, the the evidence of it like being able to like attack aircraft. Which mm-hmm. game over, man. Game over. Yeah, it's totally game over. <laughs> like fuck. And then this one's kind of minor. Um, Doctor Blank um, says your report says that O nine six didn't react to the cold. It was negative blank degrees C. Um, would, and this is a audio recording. Um, did the doctor actually say it was negative number degrees C? Like, not Celsius. He said C. <laughs> like, it would have been typed in Celsius. It right? might have been paraphrased. Uh, yeah. Immersion broken. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we know that C stands for Celsius. Yeah. So they probably just made it short wow. form for the... Uh, the person right transcribing the audio. Man, it, it feels nice to not be in the nook right now. Like, gamers just hugging that, just hold, <laughs> holding on to that couch there in the nick, nitpick nook. I missed the nook. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a there's just one section. I don't know where it is because I didn't write down where it was. Where it's, well, it says it a few times. I just first realized the annoyance of this late into the game here. Where it says data expunged instead yeah. of redacted? Why isn't yeah. all redacted or all data expunged? What's because the difference? It's the same thing. Yeah, so why are they different, though? I don't know, just different. Maybe it might have been uh, added by somebody else. I don't know, maybe. Or, like, there was a couple of um, passes of redactions. Yeah. There was a first pass, and then later on... Data expunged. More stuff had to be... 
Yeah, because some of it's black box, some of it's actually just redacted, and some of it's expunged or explicit deleted. Or no, there's no explicit deleted. But either way, there's different mm-hmm. format for it. Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess the only way it would make sense is if it had multiple passes of redaction. Yes, which... And people would do the, it differently. Yeah, and according to the editing history, because that's how I found out who wrote it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there were a couple... Of, there's been a couple of passes over the years. So. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, my, my last one was just essentially how the captain get away without looking at it. He said himself that it was a miracle that he got away without looking at his face. Yeah. But... So, like, was it back always to him? Must have been. Like, he just, must have just just been the really entire lucky. fight. Yeah, yeah, he was just really fucking lucky. Yeah. It's like when the guy gets sniped, or gets sniped, and it only, like, it, it like, goes through his helmet. It clearly shows, like, he shows, looks at the helmet, and it's clearly there. But it just skimmed his head. Like, it's yeah. a miracle. I suppose. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Okay. Uh, well, um, I guess on to the kitchen event. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is, I'm going to use, uh, first thing that came to mind, so I, I saw this in this part of the entry. So this is regarding audio log of interview 096-1, Dr. Dan, or sorry, Dr. Redacted, but it was taking damage, Captain, uh, Captain Redacted. Uh, if it was, it wasn't showing it. It must have lost all its organs, all its blood, but it didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all, though. It kept tearing my squad apart. So this sort of gave me an idea that the SCP-96 is some kind of indestructible supernatural skeleton. Is it? And T-9-8800? Yeah, no, it, it's kind of like that. Like, yeah, it's basically like, um, like a, it's the skeleton itself is the actual cr- entity, and its skin and whatnot is actually just um, like the biomass that it absorbs from um, from its victims. Like, it basically mm-hmm. it absorbs its victims or whatever. Like, that's actually what it's doing. And it basically incorporates it and ma- gives itself flesh. And then maybe for some reason it, like, bile, it like uh, metabolizes, like, soup, like uh, at, a, at a really rapid rate. So that's why it looks emaciated. Mm-hmm. And it's just left with, like, a, a kind of like a, a, a thin or, like, kind of a thin, um, like, shell of, like, flesh on its bo- on its bones to, as, like, oh, maybe as, like, some kind of, like, natural, uh, unnatural camouflage mm-hmm. um, to not just be a skeleton roaming around. So the creature is the skeleton. Yeah. The skeleton is, like, actually an exoskeleton to yeah. the creature. Exactly. And maybe that's why it's, like, why uh, it's, like, kind of the way it moves. It's, like, it's shy and, like, it reacts violently to things that see its face is that it's, like, um, is that it's, it's kind of self-conscious or shy about it or, like, it's maybe that's, like, the na- the mentality of its nature or something like that. Um, so it gives credence to the whole, like, spooky, scary skeleton meme online of, like, skeletons, they're out to get us. <laughs> oh, shit, holy fuck, skeletons, like, that, that, like, have you ever seen that photoshopped magazine of, like, skeletons, they're the real terror, they're out to get us. Holy shit, you have a skeleton in your, in your body, it's trying to get you. <laughs> like, kind of shit like that. Like, it, it's actually a whole, like, line of memes online. Yeah. Uh, of just skeletons are the enemy. Um, in terms of game fodder... I could definitely build this creature like this, anyway, in Delta Green or even Knights Black Agents with uh, the vampire uh, or supernatural monster character cre- or monster creator. Uh, and then in Delta Green, it's just really easy to like make your own monsters with their um, uh, in the handler's book. So yeah, I could definitely like make this creature some kind of like cosmic entity that agents have to deal with and like mm-hmm. get fucked with. Um, Story and scenario ideas I've, I came up with while, re- while reading the century. Um, so a cell or a group charged with finding and destroying imagery and recordings around the world of the shy guy. Um, probably by getting reports of strange murders uh, with the MO of the creature, like basically like the colla- like finding murders that are like like have like really weird collateral and like a the line of co- like, collateral <laughs> and then up a, to the and, death. The, and then and then a missing person with yeah. like a lot of blood yeah. um, and then they go into the building and basically try to like um, sift through the crime scene of the last victim and like risk themselves becoming the next target because once they see it they they're fucked right mm-hmm. um, this could also work as a high pace slasher scenario. In an SCP less, in SCP less, so like no SCP foundation, just this creature in a, in the world, um, like just being in the investigators on site of a murder of the of the destruction I we brought up below or brought up uh, above. Um, previous, yeah, previous. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, and then finding the photo as part of the evidence, 
perhaps so, and then like basically being targeted. So suddenly you're trying to find a way, any desperate way, to try and not be killed by this thing as it's coming after you. Uh, and perhaps a way to stop the creature from going after you is to cut out your own eyes. Like, it's the uh, possible win scenario in that you can't, <laughs> it, like, like maybe it is your, like, your, like your ability to see it, like, is what kind of, it, 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 you cut those out, you actually cut, like, it, it slows it down at the very least or something. Or even just putting a blindfold on. Uh, if you physically can't see I'm it coming, it that, might not work. Yeah, that, um, or perhaps undergoing some kind of cognitive eraser procedure or rituals, like, to wipe out the memory. Basically, mm. like, either, um, I knew the term, I heard the term, like, last week, but I can't remember. Basically, like, seeing something and, like, or listening to something so much that you basically, like, lose all context to the meaning of it. Um, and basically, like, so you can't, like, you don't even know what you're looking at anymore. Like, hmm. being, like, kind of oversaturating yourself to that point to basically wipe out the memory of the creature. Maybe that's a way to stop it, like, as a bane or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be a le- slightly less extreme wind scenario than just cutting out your eyes kind of thing or getting a lobotomy <laughs> I think it's just do the marshmallow armor yeah clearly that works yeah um another idea I had and obviously that scenario would probably either be like you make the car- the creature completely invincible and you're fucked mm. and like it's basically a, to to quote a Delta Green game it is a artifact zero scenario where you were fucked from the get go yeah because mm-hmm. in artifact zero there's this, it's a scenario of Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green, where you find your own spoilers for a Delta Green scenario, uh, Artifact Zero by Dennis Detweiler. It's really cool. Um, basically, they find an artifact in this town uh, and redacted. Um, so yeah, it's basically a, a, like a completely like like no like it was more the the story the the, the mystery of it is more about the the, the journey of the investigation so that and the payoff is that well you all die. <laughs> yeah. Um, in true Lovecraft fashion, mm-hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, kind of that kind of scenario. Like that's basically what this kind of scenario kind of leads to, because there's no way to kill it or stop it from doing it, other than again finding a way to like cognitively remove it from your mind, yeah, or like gouge out your eyes, or like like we said, um, or uh, and then my other idea for a game is being the maintenance guy in ch- uh, charged with checking the containment unit. Uh, for leaks and cracks, um, and you're on shift, and then a said breach hap is discovered, uh, or it goes loose, it gets loose on on your shift, so you're having to escape without the aid of sight. So it's kind of like the, that that Netflix movie Bird Box, where like if you see the creature, you're fucked, and it, like basically apocalyptic level. So like, everybody's basically blindfolded mm-hmm. to try and avoid because like, as soon as you see as soon as, as soon as you see the creature with your eyes. You are infected with its influence, and you're you're suddenly you're part of the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, it would be a scenario or a game or a story or something like that where it's just your shift, and you roll the, the luck of the dice, and you uh, the creature broke out while you were on shift. So now you're trying to basically get away, either escape the the the, the room before they nerve gas the place, um, while also not being able to see the creature because for some reason the creature's out, and or like maybe it's. The door's just been oh, like the the like the the cell has actually somehow been opened, but the creature's not like going after anybody. It's just roaming around now for yeah. some reason. Sort of like that SCP breach um, uh, video game that came out. Speaking of, kind of only because you said video game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tangentially, I've been triggered. No, yeah, a little, <laughs> bit, <laughs> a little bit. No, um, but that would be one way that um, the oh. the workers around 096 could do stuff safely. Is if they all they do it all in virtual reality, so they all have Oculus Rifts on while they're around the cube working on shit. And even if it breaks out, it might be coded into the like the shift work game that you're doing. That there'll be like a red box being like, "Oh, it's out. Oh no!" But you, you can't see it because it's all just plastic. My other idea, actually, like for stories of that, it'd be a really, really um, uh, beneficial, I think, for the SCP Foundation to just hire blind people. As shift workers for this specifically for yeah. this specific entity, yeah, like have like their their shift workers just all be blind, like that you can you can function uh, like like they can they can set it up the the workspace to function for blind people, yeah, um, and yeah, just do that, like you're and there we go, you don't have to worry about the only issue is like 
just have like some automated gun turrets and shit that, like around the the thing to like maybe try and stop or slow it down. <laughs> I don't know why they even bother at this point, <laughs> but yeah. like so they're not nerve gassing like every like like every couple every like it's <laughs> every outbreak causes the doctor the doctor in the control room nerve gas is like <laughs> just goes over. Two days since last incident. <laughs> back to yeah, zero. Yeah. It's like, and then marks a tally. There's like 500 tallies on the whole. Yeah, so many people die. Yeah, it's unnecessary though because like, if you and I have come up with two quick ways that that could be fixed, I know. it's VR of, it's, and blindness. The thing is, it's part of the macabre humor to the and the horror of the SCP Foundation is the bureaucratic horror. And the fact that they're using so many resources and like because it's humans and human error is definitely a thing. Mm-hmm. There is so much like room there for like terrible things to go wrong. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, no, I that that's my, my ideas for like scenarios and ga- and story wise. It's just like, yeah, you're basically like the creature's gotten out, and you're on shift. What do you do? Or high paced slasher flick thing where like you're you're wrestling to find ugh, wrestling to find a way to like mind wipe yourself so that you don't get become you, you don't remain the target. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Mikey, what do you got in the kitchen? What do you got cooking up? Um, well, the first one's the obvious total party kill scenario, right? which, I mean, it sort of lends itself to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the other one, which I thought of, is um, basically giving SCP-096 a weakness of some kind. And thinking about it, I was like, what if Wilford saw the face... But wasn't affected. Oh, so like maybe, or yeah. That's the other thing. What if the SCP entity comes into contact with a, with uh, with somebody who is immune to its um, uh, uh, to its ability? Like there is some minuscule percentage of the human population that it doesn't violently devour or redact it, redact from existence. What if it sees a reflection of itself? Oh, fuck. is it like a Gorgon situation? Oh, fuck! Yeah, it could even be that. Yeah, that would that would be another. Like Mirror that. shield. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> get get link on the gym. It just it just starts cannibalizing itself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I like that uh, idea. Like like what if it's me? It's kind of like in, um, like give have it that like, and then that person basically becomes an SCP because they are the only person that is allowed to work in conjunction with the SCP entity mm-hmm. because it won't kill them, and they have effectively become SCP zero nine six. Dash A, because they are now affiliated with. But that's also the name of the first incident that happened. <laughs> yeah, again, we've, we've already, we've yeah, already talked at length that yeah. sometimes the SCPs like designations are a little construed mm-hmm. because it's not all one person doing the same. It's not. It, it's it's as regulated as it can be for a communal writing project. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. there are always going to be some issues. I'm just surprised that there isn't a guide, like there, cause there is guidelines there's to guide, making it, there's definitely but I'm surprised there isn't one specifically for guidelines on listing different incidences within your SCP. Yeah. I'm surprised there isn't either because um, it's all meant to be, um, all bureaucratic. like bureaucratic. Like this is the way that everyone should be writing it. Cause this is how they would be doing it in yeah. Canon, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I guess it's also kind of like, just like some people like, at offices, like even though there is a designated like email format, everybody's emails are usually are usually different, like in the way they write it, because people are different. Like our office has is notorious for like there are three different people that do the that do the same job three different fucking ways. Mm-hmm. There, even though we do have guidelines for for uh, for a method, they all go about it at a different angle. I thought SCPs are essentially like in. Lore. It's someone filling out a form. Yeah, it's basically filling out reports and like it's again bureauc- bureaucracy and like that format of like uh, of like paperwork as a as a genre mm-hmm. for like horror. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like it's it's basically done up like a a government like filing report kind of thing. But yeah. again, people do different things. Do uh, write things even if there is a format, they write they use that format in different ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. We all right. We we broke we broke into your uh, containment. Sorry. Yeah. So SCP zero nine six shows signs of being telepathic 
to some degree because it knows when somebody has seen yeah there's some kind of, of it. supernatural or pe- preternatural like marking system or targeting yeah. system so the way i spun it is that it knows when someone is thinking about its face in a negative way like oh god that's ugly oh god yeah <laughs> yeah that's right yeah okay so like because every time anybody react like sees its face like oh it's horrifying or like even like when like the guy looked at the photo like the the, the four pixels, yeah. um, like and they they comment it's like oh well, maybe he just saw like this like ugly smudge in the background with like some snow and it's like yeah it, it's that still qualifies as a negative term so like what if somebody saw his face like oh he's adorable <laughs> and it's like suddenly the the monster is immune to that because yeah. it's it only goes after negative feedback mm-hmm. hence why it's the shy guy because it's all because it all because mm-hmm. there's two stages to its uh to its uh, emotional outbursts mm-hmm. uh when you first see it there's a minute or two where it like starts like like freaking out and crying like basically witch like love love for dead style witch mm-hmm. uh and then after that two minute mark it goes after you and like goes violent so yeah that's yeah, that, I like that explanation as to like why it goes after somebody. It's it's because they're reacting to the object in a negative format completely. Like if there's somebody who just doesn't find that at all negative or like mm-hmm. it doesn't have any kind of negative reaction whatsoever mm-hmm. to the creature, that's your window of like immunity. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even even not even if it's not like, oh, that's adorable. Even if it's like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's just, cool. like, there's no negativity whatsoever in the back of you, in your consciousness whatsoever. Yeah. Like, that's the targeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really like that idea as an explanation as to why it goes after somebody. It's because it's just like, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, my reasoning for why it went after the mountaineer is that he was, he had his old pictures and they were covered in dust, so he had the nature say, "Oh, what the fuck is this?" <laughs> or, yeah, the yeah, dust. yeah or he saw he saw the little smudge of like snow on or a little yeah. like blur. It's like, what's that? Why is there a blemish on this? Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, bam, you're done, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Like even if it's like the slightest negativity, like you're fucked. <laughs> sure, guy's very sensitive. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. very sensitive. He's a very yeah. sensitive little guy. Mm-hmm. A seven foot tall little guy. Little guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, just for the fun of it, uh, maybe SCP-96 just wants to be pretty, so giving it a, a makeup set and a mirror will help it make it feel confident. Or maybe. make it kill itself if it's a Gorgon situation. That would be interesting to have, like, yeah, what happens when you put a mirror in front of it? Like, what does it do? Because, mm-hmm. like, yeah, it seems like a very vain monster as well. So, so that's my... that's where the that's where sketches don't that's where sketches aren't aren't affected by it. it's triggering because sketches is like oh you put that much trouble to actually sketch out my face that's so nice <laughs> yeah. like it's actually a positive like it's it's considered a positive thing because it like they somebody who actually went to the trouble to like to to, care to represent it. Doing it yeah, yeah. represent it yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. makes sense to me my god how do you how do you have manage to like ruin a story in one in one episode and then make it uh, make one better in another? Like you have a, a very drastic and rare a coin gift. whether or not he wants to improve or yeah. destroy this story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's my uh, thoughts on making this into more of an actual scenario that can survive. Not just survive. Yeah, who wants to do that? <laughs> All right, all right, all right there. All right there, power gamers and like D and D players. <laughs> I'll stick with my Call of Cthulhu. Where nothing, There's nothing wrong with feeling empowered. Okay. I'll just, I'll just stick with my Call of Cthulhu where you die at the end from time radiation. <laughs> Best hope is if you just get cancer. Wow, <laughs> you're a horrible human being. Yeah, well. Anyways, yeah. Uh, for mine, uh, with the open-ended ending of the SCP entry, yeah, it could be taken into a story or a game as in. An investigation on the next attack that happens, yeah. like what we've kind of sort of brushed on, mm-hmm. or even the old ones that have already happened, and the investigators essentially um, showing up in the town to get clues and testimonies, and eventually leading to the investigators themselves stumbling across the SCP. Like they're not even like investigators from SCP; they're just like normal cops yeah. that are not supposed to know about it. Here's an idea. That you you kind of like touched on a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a documentary crew investigating a town in like Arizona or somewhere in the desert, 
somewhere near a desert that's a ghost town now. Like they and no one knows what happened to it. Uh, like they just packed up and left. Like mm-hmm. no one knows what happened to everybody. And so they're going in and investigating. And the SCP Foundation missed a piece of art, uh, a piece of nature, uh, like a piece of the the photo or something, like yeah. that. or missed another photo or video feed thing um, of the creature. So. Yeah, like basically, like you do, like kind of like this spooky ghost adventures, like style scenario or story where like they're investigating this this abandoned town, and then they go into they just happen to go into into the into the into the the last target's house and find a photo of it, of the creature, mm-hmm. and then they're suddenly targeted and attacked. Yeah, because um, it could be just that four pixel quote unquote situation yeah, that, yeah, where yeah. it's overlooked by everyone. Yeah. Um, it's actually something that I bring that up because like uh, with you saying that, but also like uh, I was watching, we were watching a video, uh, like a documentary shows on YouTube, on, on YouTube, on TV uh, over the weekend. And there was one about this town in Australia that's not on any maps, but it's mm. on Google maps. Like if you zoom in, like there's this town there, but nobody knows why it was abandoned. And apparently it had something to do with like, there was a terrorist attack in the, in the mid nineties mm. Uh, like and it was like basically the he- the entire town was a headquarters for a bio terrorist attack. Oh, that's so nice. the government of Australia basically wiped the town from the map. Like they 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 evacuated the entire town, removed everybody all out of it, and just left it out in the desert in the bad in the badlands of of Australia to to just collect dust. Hmm. But somebody found it on Google Maps and was like, "Why is this town exist? There's no town in here." Yeah. There should be no but there's buildings. And yeah, there's tons, like buildings and, and roads and stuff like that. But and there's like infrastructure. But there was, it's been abandoned for decades. Hmm. So yeah, that would be a, a, a an interesting uh, take on it. basically the at the aftermath of the of incident nine nine is your answer? Don't even that one. Don't even that day. Yeah. Don't you even? <laughs> don't you dare. Well, yeah. Uh, the other way I saw it is um. Uh, switching the viewpoint of, to the monster, essentially, of like uh, where it's essentially it, the the story could be he could have been a human at some point, but through some weird science or whatever, or if he's a test tube baby or whatever, he's zero nine six now. So the story could be essentially of s- someone that's in solitary being studied for unknown reasons and blacking out randomly while when he gets enraged, yeah, but not remembering anything. And he's always waking up injured. His injuries get more and more severe as the story goes on until we figure out that he's actually a rampaging monster by the end of it. Yeah, basically a Jekyll, kind of like a, a twist on the Jekyll and Hyde thing. Yeah, pretty uh, much, yeah. And yeah, like, it could be, like, we know that it's in a, he, his habitat is somewhere in the mountains, so it could be, like, somewhere in, like, the Urals or the, the Caucasus, um, the uh, the ones in uh, Eastern Europe and some of that, like, where, like, the Soviets might have been doing some kind of experiment. Or, hell, it could be in, like, the Rockies. He's from, and he just yeah goes. He just goes off and um, uh, like wakes up in a bunker in like a bunker or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then like yeah, the whole time it's it's like Lovecraft's The Outsider, where like the entire t- uh, the entire story is told from the viewpoint of the monster, but you don't know that you're a mon the the the, the narrator is a monster until uh, the very end. Yeah, and he's seeing everybody else's like monsters or horrific things and weirdo things, and then he realizes he's the one the creature. Hmm. Yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> so I mean, that would work great for a story. Like mm-hmm. that's like, what I mean for a story, not a game scenario. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, game scenario would be a little bit harder. I mean, it's it's doable, but I think that's more suited to a story, um, like to a, like just a on paper story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got for the kitchen. Okay. Uh, well, we we've talked a fair a lot more than I thought we were ha- we were going to talk about for SCP zero nine six, but I'm glad we did because uh, it's been a long time coming for our show for this creature. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite SCPs, if I'm being honest. Like, it was one of my first ones outside of um, the the weird... The, the one with the photograph where it's just like a, like an art project in the corner. <laughs> like, the one that you blink, you die. With, like, the statue thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, like, one of my other... It's not that, a picture, it's a statue. No, but there's a picture of the statue that, that created the basically the SCP entity. Like, they, they wrote the story around that picture. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant like there was a picture frame in the no, cell. No, 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 no. no yeah, sorry. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so like this was one of like the first SCPs I ever read, and I actually really liked this one. I'm surprised it took this long to get to. Um, I would I would recommend reading this one. This one's actually like it's it's an it's an SCP entry, and like and like some of the other ones we've we've touched on, like this one does tell a, a pretty decent, a pretty thorough story. 
like through its bureaucratic uh, reporting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we it, we get the class, the description of the creature, we get a bunch of its incidences, and then we kind of find out. Although they never show how they're going to kill it, they, they it's it's basically we get a conclusion to the creature because it's there. Do it's, they confirm it's dead? No, they just say it, it is scheduled for termination. Although if they uh, whether or not they succeed or not, that's up in the air. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I recommend SCP-096. It's, it's a cool story and cool entry. And there's definitely, uh, fodder to be had for like writing your own story, in, uh, with this in mind, or even like using it as a, a game for uh, a tabletop RPG. Mm-hmm. So. All right. <laughs> so with the whole weakness of it being, I, I, focusing on the negative, that it, the, yeah, like, like that. I, I was and I was struggling to find like to even come up with any kind of weakness. Like the best I was coming up with was like just erase it from your mind. Like somehow find a way to memory wipe yourself, mm-hmm. like neuralize your yourself of that. Yeah, but that is a, that is a great. Uh, like as much as I don't like giving weaknesses to mo- some of these monsters because like I want them to be like just fuck you and terrible. I like that makes so that does make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. So. Congrats. Yeah. yeah, so with that, I 100% recommend this. Uh, but before I had that, I was only having around 50% recommendation. That's still a recommendation. <laughs> so, it's fair. Gamer? I loved it. It was my favorite. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I it's just, it pissed. It's the first time I've read an SCP, and it made me angry. Just because, like, it makes me sad. It made me like, so angry. The, the way you read, because you read it the way you read things, sometimes it ruined the story for. You. Specifically, because it didn't tell me that I was reading a different incident, so I thought it was the same one. So it left me angry for three quarters of the story. <laughs> and by the end, I'm like, oh, thanks. I if only I knew this from the get go that it was a different fucking time. Like it could have been years later, but I don't even know. But yeah, it, it just. With more clarification, I could see it being good, and it's just in the way it is. I <laughs> all right for someone like me who misses the fact that there are different incidences, it'll annoy you. But if you get it when you're reading it, then it's fine. And I like that there's a story, but I wish that it um, continued further to explain that they've been trying a couple of di- different methods to terminate it, and so far nothing's worked, and then end there. Right now, it just says, like, termination start. Like, you're okay to, tr- to try it, but they haven't said what they're even trying yet. Yeah. So, there's ways to go with it still. It can be expanded upon more. I wish the two instances were clearly said, like, this is incident A, this is incident B. And But aside from those changes, with those changes in place, I'd recommend it. But without them, it's like a... 49% recommendation. Because <laughs> it is good the way it is. It yeah. just it pissed me off so much. Well, I mean, and maybe yeah, it was like, just like a bad timing. And it's yeah, just like, it, it might just be that. Like, I, again, like, we are, we, have, we all have different views and opinions on the yeah. shit. Like, as this, this series, this, this show has shown, like, we see and read very differently. So, yeah. That's, that's fair. All right. Well, that was this week's episode. If you like what you heard, or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted. Whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. Uh, if you, you can direct your hate mail toward Gamer uh, at Gamer in Yellow uh, uh, Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is Gamer in Yellow, but without the the Gamer in Yellow, but without the W, because Twitter won't give them that last digit because my name's too long. Yeah, um, Mikey is at the E stands for Evil, and I'm at Review Cultist. Uh, you can send us emails as well uh, at Al dente rigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T S at gmail.com. Where you can also leave us suggestions for other creep bosses or SCP entries that you'd like to discuss on the show. Um, also, let us know how we're doing. Like, if we, if you like these like kitchen segments that we do where we come up with like game scenario fodder and stories from these entries, if you'd like to see more of that, uh, let us know. Uh, also, if you'd like to help support the show, you can go to Patreon, look up Al Dente Rigor Mortis on Patreon, and select the backer tier you'd like to support us at. We have early access, special episodes, extra content uh, for $2 and $5 a piece. So, yeah, just do that. <laughs> uh, and for our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you guys immensely, because you're helping keep those hosting bills at bay, and much like an SCP entity, 
we need to keep that contained. So, thank you. We need funding, basically. Like, much like the foundation, we need funding. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, and to our listeners and the creators of these stories and entries, thank you guys immensely, because without your listenership, we really wouldn't have much of a show. And without your content and horror and creepy stuff, we really wouldn't have much of a show. So, thank you. Uh, you can also, uh, if you'd like, uh, go to Redbubble and uh, look up El Dente Morris, and we have some uh, some little merch there, uh, like stickers and pillows and shower curtains, <laughs> clocks, <laughs> t-shirts uh, with the El Dente. If you happen to want the ADR logo on anything, <laughs> yeah. it's probably on there. Trust me, I've I've basically just gone down the list of all the products and just, yep, yep, yep. Because yep, why not? Them. Yeah, might as well. Uh, but yeah, so we've got that stuff. If you want to check that out, it's at Redbubble at El Dente Um So yeah, and, th- and that has been this week's episode. Um, until next time, I've been your host, Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. The E is 10 for evil. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And this has been El Dente Sleep well. <laughs>